वेलकम इन दिस सेशन वी वुड टॉक अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लॉन्गिट्यूड लैटिट्यूड एंड कैलकुलेशन ऑफ टाइम टू बिगिन विद वॉट इज द शेप ऑफ द अर्थ नाउ देर वॉज न्यूमरस डिस्कशन दैट सराउंडेड द शेप ऑफ द अर्थ एंड फाइनली वॉट केम अप वॉज अर्थ इज अ ऑब्लेट स्पियर राइट दैट मीन्स इट इज नॉट एग्जैक्टली अ स्पियर इट इज समॉट बल्ड टूवर्ड्स द इक्वेटर एंड फ्लैटन टूवर्ड्स द पोल सो द इक्वेटोरियल रेडियस वी कैन से एंड द पोलर रेडियस इज नॉट द सेम सो लेट से आई हैव द अर्थ हियर नाउ द रेडियस इफ आई टेक टूवर्ड्स द इक्वेटर और टूवर्ड्स द पोल देर वुड बी डिफरेंस इन द वैल्यूज दैट वुड बी सी अगेन वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द अर्थ और मूवमेंट फ्रॉम लेट से वन कंट्री टू अनदर कंट्री देर नीड्स टू बी सम स्टैंडर्ड दैट नीड टू बी देयर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट देर वॉज अ नीड फॉर द जियोग्राफिकल ग्रिड टू कम इन एंड देर फॉर वी हैव द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लैटिट्यूड्स एंड लॉन्गिट्यूड्स नाउ दीज आर द हॉरिजोंटल एंड द वर्टिकल लाइन्स दैट आर देयर द horizontal lines are known as parallels or the latitudes in a very simple word or the longitudinal lines or the vertical lines are what are the great circles as they are called as now understanding each of these and their construction is important so let's first talk about a latitude latitude which is also known as parallel is very very important because it's an angular distance from the center of the earth so let's say you have the earth and you have the equator from the center of the equator if let's say i want to understand a 20 degree south how what i would do is i'll draw a 20 degrees here and a 20 degrees here and with this 20 degrees i can draw another line and this would be a 20 degree south line similarly i can draw 20 degrees north and so on and so forth so what we are trying to understand is it's an angular distance which is understood in degrees minutes or seconds north and south of equator so in all how many lines would be there to understand understand the latitudes you would definitely have one equator and then that is 0 degree and then you move towards the pole in the north till 90 degrees and towards the south till 90 degrees south but leaving the equator you have 89 lines that are counted towards the side, south and 89 towards the north and then one equator so total how many parallels are there we can say there are 179 parallels that are there equator is the greatest circle in the case of latitudes because it's the only circle that divides the globe into north and south now do understand that when we talk about north south divide that is totally different when we talk about countries or uh, as a part of north south divide it is based on economic development of the nations the developed versus developing nations however when we are talking about the north and the south here we are merely focusing on the north hemisphere vis a vis a south hemisphere so this zero degree line or equator is the great circle in case of latitudes and this demarcates the north circle the north hemisphere and the south hemisphere if i say the earth was a perfect sphere in that case the length of 1 degree would be 111 kilometers but since it is oblate spheroid in shape the length of the latitudes vary at poles it's somewhere closer to 110.6 kilometers and at equator at the poles it is 111.7 however at equator it's 110.6 kilometers and that's the minor variation that is seen because it's not a perfect sphere as we can understand so drawing of the latitudes is a very simple concept that we have understood the concept why latitudes and parallels are important and what is the basic idea behind this so we can differentiate regions as temperate regions torrid regions temperate regions and frigid regions based on the latitudinal extent the next is longitudes now longitudes always run north to south so what happens at the pole at the pole they start to converge or meet and therefore 
we say that these meridians join towards the pole and they are farthest towards the equator closest near the pole now when i say closest near the pole that means the difference between the two uh, meridians that are there is zero however at the equator the distance is maximum it's around 111.3 kilometers at nearly 45 degrees if we see the distance is nearly 79 kilometers drastically reducing further north and that's how we have the meridians that are there now these help in understanding the location the direction so wherever you have the intersection of latitudes and longitudes i can have the exact place on the earth that could be embarked similarly whenever we are talking about be it latitude or longitude we are talking about degrees one degree is further subdivided into 60 minutes and one minute is further subdivided into 60 seconds and this is the unit that we use to subdivide these areas so a whole rotation takes 24 hours so in 24 hours how much does earth move is 360 degrees so that means what we are trying to understand is the calculation for one hour and then the calculation for one hour we could further reduce it to one uh, degree okay so one degree we have four minutes that is calculated and that's how we understand the calculations that would be done later on or the problems that we would be solving later on now understanding how do we draw the longitudes drawing the longitude is pretty simple take the north hemisphere or the south hemisphere not the equatorial region so under a latitude we took the equatorial region under drawing a longitude we would take the north hemisphere or the south hemisphere now taking the north hemisphere or the north pole from the north pole i mark 45 degrees and that gives me 45 degrees east and west and based on which i have the meridians that would be drawn so it's the angular distance remember it's an angular distance east or west of prime meridian which is the zero degree line or the greenwich meridian as it is already called as opposite to the greenwich meridian you have 180 degree line which is also known as the international date line and it is at that point the date shifts so shift in the day is seen at the international date line directly opposite to the zero degree or the greenwich or prime meridian as it is called as so the angular distance east and west of the prime meridian so the angular distance east and west of the prime meridian is what is calculated under longitudes angular distance north and south of equator as the latitude very very clear the next important thing that we would understand here is solving the problems now greenwich meridian it's 12 noon if i move 90 degree east which is bhutan let's say the capital of bhutan what would be the local time there now 90 degrees east that means 90 into 4 so we already know 1 degree is equal to 4 minutes that we had already seen before now this 90 degree when multiplied by 4 gives me 360 minutes 360 minutes divided by 60 minutes gives me how much hours? 6 hours. So that means Thimpu, <coughs> the capital of Bhutan, is 6 hours ahead of the 12 noon that is seen. So I would have 6 hours later or 6 p.m. we could say that would be the time in Thimpu. Now let's understand another location which is 90 degrees west. So my whole calculation remains the same the only thing that varies is this is from the greenwich it was east and this is now west so the east is ahead in time the west is behind in time so it's yet to come to 12 noon okay so people at 60 90 degrees west are yet to have their lunch that's what you can remember and here it would be 6 a.m not 6 p.m because it's six hours before okay so that's a major difference that you need to understand now based on these calculations 
each of the country devised its own standard time so let's say across india if we talk about there are so many states that are there if each state had a different time zone if there is a interstate migration or movement of let's say transport or any other commodity that is taking place it would be very difficult to understand for such a small region so in order to bring everything at par we have a indian standard time that is there which is five and a half hours ahead of the international uh, the greenwich prime meridian that is the zero degree okay now this line which is the international standard time that passes through mirzapur and that's where you have the IST that runs which is five and a half hours ahead of the Greenwich Meridian. Now this Indian standard time is of course not the time of getting late but the time through which you have the standardization that has come across the west and the east of India. Now coming on to next important time concept which is international date line. International date line was a very very unique concept. We have already discussed this in our separate class where we discussed the story of Lewis Carroll, his hemispherical problems and his movement with the light. So the idea is if you are moving from one country and coming back to the same country, at some point there was a change in the day. Now how abrupt it was and what was the point where it actually changed, the day actually changed and that's through the international date line. Now international date line is exactly opposite to the green which that's the zero degree meridian so it's 180 degrees first of all crosses the Pacific Ocean. Now in order to accommodate the various countries there are certain bends in the international date line that are seen and these bends are important because let's say the island group of Samoa and Kiribati both are lying in a same longitude but have different time zones or different dates rather. Why it is so? Because one of it is to the east of the international date line, the other is to the west of the international date line. Understand this problem in a very simple fashion. On this globe, you have the Asian countries, the countries of India, China here and the American continent here. Now, when you are crossing it eastward, okay, what happens is you are losing a day. So, from Thursday, it becomes Friday. That means if you are crossing the international date line towards the east, you lose a day because there would be no more Thursday. If you are moving from an American continent to let's say an Indian continent crossing the IDL what would happen is you would directly jump from Thursday to Friday. In this region when you will reach you won't have any more Thursday that would be visible. But if you are crossing it westwards okay that's moving from the Asian continents to the American continents in very simple fashion what would happen is you gain a day. Gain a day meaning if here it is Thursday, here it would be Wednesday. That means when you have reached American continent, you are yet to witness another Thursday. And therefore, we say it's gainer day. And that's one of the major concepts that you need to understand under international date line. Very, very important. The separate class that we have taken on international date line in detail is very, very essential to comprehend this concept in detail if you want. And there are definitely various classes that we have covered on time zone calculation and calculation of GMT problems, which is again very, very important movement with the flight, the time differences that are there and all issues related to this. So this was a very very basic class understanding the concept of latitude, longitude, their constructions and we would be covering many more interesting sessions so stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead.